Where will the GAC champions be crowned this year? Well, we're going to talk about that and more on this edition of the GAC Weekly. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and thank you for joining us on the GAC Weekly today on its new home, MidwestSports.net's YouTube channel. And you know what? I am joined today by somebody very special. Let me bring him in right now, the Sports Information Director at Southwestern Oklahoma State University, Doug Self. Doug, thanks for being with me today on the GAC Weekly. Yeah, hey, Joey, no problem. Glad to be here and talking with you and, you know, talking championships. That's what we all do this for. <laughs> exactly right. And seriously, I mean, you know, this this is where uh, it really gets to be fun. We start talking about these things right now because football, and we're going to be talking football even more very, very quickly. I realize that football doesn't have a championship site. It's just one of those things that, you know, like they say in college football, every game is important. So no championship game to go there. And we'll get that out of the way because I know it's it's time. I mean, you guys are already talking football at Southwestern, right? Yeah. Oh, man, it is. <laughs> it's going to be here before we know it. You know, you get past the 4th of July and then the countdown really kicks in. And, you know, I think we're less than three, four weeks before the team reports. And, you know, shoot, month and a half for, away from the first game. So we'll be here before we know it. And just for the Southwestern fans who are watching this, Southwestern opens the season in Durant on September 5th, and that is a Thursday night, so be ready for that. I like how the season opens on Thursdays. I think that's pretty cool just to, to get things going. And, of course, in evening time in, in the opening of September, it's ridiculously hot in Arkansas and Oklahoma, so uh, glad about that. But let's get on into the championship sites now as uh, Doug and I are going to take you through this first championship site for the upcoming season. Well, you get into the championship of cross country and this year Washita is going to serve as the host for the cross country championship that's going to be on Saturday October 26 which again will be here before you know it and, and Doug one of the cool things about that not only is Washita serving as the host there but it's a new coach in Washita as uh, someone who has been a staple in the GAC and in Harding's program for 17 years, 18 years. Steve Guyman is coaching now at Washita, and I think that's a, an interesting uh, change of venues for a familiar face. It's always interesting when you have you know coaching changes really at, at any level, any position, but especially when you have one within the conference. You know, it's, it's one of those things you don't see all the time, but um, you know, obviously. We only know so much of what goes into a decision like that, but for you know, coach be moving over to Washington, there's definitely got to be um, you know some promise with that program that he sees and the ability to you know take that program and do big things over there with Washington. Washita hosting again on the 26th, and I agree. It's it's always interesting to see someone move within the conference. They're just the dynamics of that are are something else. And and who do you cheer for then? Do you cheer for a, cheer for the the <laughs> laundry or do you cheer for the face or you know anyway? Uh, we move along to women's soccer, men's soccer, and once again uh, this year the championship tournament will be hosted by the regular season champions and of course uh, Southwestern uh, you're familiar with uh, with that team pretty intimately showing that right now Sandra Nabuatame uh, helped her team to a postseason championship in the GAC postseason tournament last year of course Oklahoma Baptist winning the regular season title and really quickly then on the men's side in soccer uh, it's going to be this, the same thing as uh, you see there, Harding, the regular season champion, uh, taking on Washita in that uh, in that picture right there. Washita winning uh, the the postseason championship. Uh, Doug, uh, new names coming into the picture though in the GAC and men's soccer. Lots of familiar faces, obviously, on the women's side, but on the men's side, there have been you know we've we've seen Harding, we've seen Southern Nazarene, we've seen Washita, we've seen Oklahoma Baptist for the last couple of years. Now. It's a bigger schedule as the GAC has welcomed in as associate members for men's soccer, Fort Hayes State, Newman, Northeastern State, and Roger State teams from the MIAA. Yeah, you fill that out, and then you know it essentially becomes a regional at that point because um, those are most of the teams within our region to play men's soccer, and you know a lot of really talented teams. Um, you know, one thing I like thinking about when you look at the the soccer championships is the one that you actually get to be played on the home side, you know, the team that wins the regular season gets the opportunity to host. They get that home field advantage. And, you know, we've been lucky enough here at Southwestern in my time here, we've hosted two and I think three overall. Um, but you win that outright, that conference championship and, you know, you get an added benefit of hosting the conference tournament. It's, it's a lot of fun, you know, for those student athletes to have a championship experience on their home field. And so, you know, that'll be a very competitive field for the teams, you know, fighting to get in and fighting over the right for who gets to host that conference tournament. 
And we've seen the, the fan base for soccer, for these soccer teams to really come out in droves. And when they don't have to drive that far to get there, I mean, that really does become an advantage for the regular season champions. Uh, we talked about it in, in men's soccer, too. I think one of the added benefits here is, is now you're, you're looking at uh, opportunities for an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament uh, coming along. When you don't have it with a four-team tournament, you get eight teams in play. It also helps with scheduling, too. Uh, that is a big deal. So that's coming up then. We keep on going in fall, and, and the final fall championship is going to take place at a familiar place, and that is volleyball at the Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs, Arkansas and volleyball championships November 21st through the 23rd and for the seventh straight year it's going to be the Bank OZK Arena. Now Doug I know you've been in in that arena. I know that there are a couple places you haven't been yet and actually a couple of these places I haven't had a chance to see just yet either but that is a familiar site and wow they've hosted some great championship matches. They have. It's wild to think that it's already going on their seventh year at um, over in Hot Springs but you know Unfortunately for me, that uh, that falls at a time of the year when there's always a lot of crossover events, with whether it be a football game or you know some soccer postseason play going on. So I've only made it to Hot Springs a couple times, but um, you know it's it's a place we always enjoy going. I think the student athletes enjoy it. It's a, it's a bigger venue, so it gives it that you know it gives it a big time feel, that championship feel. Um, you know, you get as many people as you can get in there and get a, get a crowd, get an atmosphere going. And, you know, the, I think it's a really good championship atmosphere for the student athletes that are competing there. Fun place to watch an event. It really is great place in, in hot springs. And that pretty much uh, rounds out the, the fall portion of the year. And then the calendar turns, it's a few months before the folks in the conference get to get together as a group again, and that will be in Bartlesville one more time. As uh, we thought last year was the final year in Bartlesville, and it's going to be back there for a ninth year. The GAC, by the way, moving into its ninth year right now, and the uh, basketball championship is going to take place in Bartlesville one more time. A fun place to get to watch basketball, and, and really you talk about familiarity there. Uh, that is definitely the case, and the folks in Bartlesville really take care of you. Bartlesville has been so good to the Great American Conference. You know, I missed, um, I've been the statistician for the last six, seven years of the conference tournament. There have been so many great games, so many great memories, um, so many championship moments that I think we'll all remember. You know, all of us that were there will remember for a long time. And, you know, like I said, when we walked out of there last March, I think we all thought, well, you know, we had a good run, Bartlesville. We'll move on to the next place and, you know, try and keep this thing going. But I guess we're lucky enough to get to go back one more time. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, you know, selfishly, I've always enjoyed going to Bartlesville. It's been, um, <laughs> it's been a really good venue to our women's basketball team. And, you know, they closed it. We they thought we closed it down this year with the championship. But, uh, you know, I guess we'll see who gets to actually close it down this year. <laughs> well, and you know what? I'll bet those Lady Bulldogs will be wanting the ones that uh, are coming back and the new ones are wanting to say, hey, listen, we get one more opportunity now. See if we can do an encore performance. That's March the 5th through the 8th, and then you move on over to track and field, and that is hosted this year by Harding University at First Security Field there, and, and you see a picture of that on the screen right now. I'm telling you what, uh, some fantastic facilities there in Harding. Beautiful setting for track. And, and the, the folks at Harding put that on April 16th through the 18th at First Security. I said field, stadium, actually. They're, they're not running on the football field, I don't guess. They're running around the outside <laughs> of the field. Sorry about that. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the men's and women's golf championships. They moved to Oklahoma for the first time, and they're going to be taking place in Duncan at the Duncan Golf and Tennis Center. So uh, moving away from Hot Springs now over to Duncan and the golf tournaments taking place in April, April 29th through the 21st, and then back over to Arkansas for a couple more events, tennis and softball, both taking place in Bentonville, Arkansas. Tennis championships at Memorial Park, April 23rd through the 25th, and softball then the next weekend, April 30th through May 2nd. A couple things about that, Doug, uh, as, as we look through that. Of course, Southern Arkansas's tennis winning last year, and we uh, get a chance to see the winners in softball. Back-to-back -back championships in the postseason tournament for Arkansas Tech there. There were some softball games that were played at Memorial Park. I actually got to call one of those there uh, as tennis is going to take place there. But then softball, this is where uh, it's a change, but not really a change. Because of the weather last year, softball moved from a double elimination tournament to a single elimination tournament eight teams and though that uh, that debuted last year 
This year was supposed to be the debut, and they're going to stick with that model, and, and it's an interesting take there. And, and you know what? I kind of like it to, to one and done. Get it? you got to get in there and, and come away with the victory, and I think that helps a lot of the pitchers in the softball tournament. Yeah, I think you you're completely right with Aaron. I mean, that really that really opens up the field. I would say if it's a if it's a one and done, you know, anybody that goes in there and has one good outing can can advance, and the top team could go in and have an off day, and they could be done. And you know, it's it's similar to what we see with our volleyball tournament, with the basketball tournaments. Um, you know, there's no battling back through a loser's bracket, and um, you know, I think it it makes that tournament completely wide open because the league has been so competitive in softball these last few years that I think you know, any of your top eight teams can beat any one of the other teams. So, I mean, you go into that with a field that's, you know, is a very balanced, completely wide open, and anything can happen. And, you know, Doug, one of the things about that, too, because of that balance and, and because of the strength of the GAC in softball, uh, among the other sports in which the GAC really has grown in, in the past eight years now moving into the ninth season, softball is one of those uh, sports for the conference that it's strong enough, even if there is an upset, you know, in the first round or the championship or whatever the case may be, it is so unlikely the GAC would be just a one-team league anyway. You know, the, the strength is there. I mean, you can be a, a top one or two, maybe even top three seed. Who knows? Uh, and you still have a really good chance of, of moving on into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you do. And it's not only those three teams, you know, three or four top teams that can compete at that level. Um, I think we got, you know, a handful. I, like I said, I think you could go into that tournament with eight teams literally that have a realistic chance of winning the conference tournament and gaining that automatic bid. Um, you know, then the hope would be that it doesn't take away from one of those teams at the top. You know, hopefully one of them's not on the bubble. But right. the conference has. I think that's one of those sports where it's just, you know, getting stronger and stronger. Southern Arc, Arkansas Tech, Harding, they've all had really strong teams. Southeastern, you know, not too long ago, we're making runs through regionals. So, um, you know, very strong in softball, and I think that that new format for them is going to make for an exciting event up in Bentonville. Final championship of the 2019-2020, wow, that's not easy to say, should be a little easier, of the 2019-2020 athletic year for the GAC will be baseball and heading back to Enid once again at the old familiar David Allen Memorial Ballpark. And, Doug, I, you know, you, you've been there a number of times, whether it uh, be statistician or, or more, uh, again, a fantastic venue for baseball. Just absolutely gorgeous and, and a great place to be in the first weekend of May. I don't think you could find a better venue to play the baseball champions championship. David Allen Memorial Ballpark is it's become one of my favorite places to watch a game. You know, even after the um, championships this year, we went back up a couple weeks later and watched some of the Juco World Series up there, and it's just it's a it's a great setup in Enid. The people in Enid really take care of us. The ballpark, you know, right there in downtown, um, where you get to watch the trains go by every couple <laughs> innings. Um, you know, it's just as long as the weather cooperates, you can't beat Enid, Oklahoma, in the first week of May. Well, I'll tell you what, it, and it it definitely cooperated this past spring. It was it. Well, I say that when it when it didn't rain out the one game, it was absolutely beautiful and cool and nice and. Uh, I guess it didn't cooperate that that one night, that Sunday. But other than that, it I you know, and I've been there a couple of times when it's been 103 degrees in the first uh, weekend in May too. So I, I think I enjoyed the 80 degrees as well. Well, Commissioner Will Pruitt talked about the championship season ahead and talked about exciting possibilities for uh, each of these venues and and for the sports. The GAC heading into its Ninth season, and all these places we mentioned, just fantastic venues, great places to go watch. So we just want to encourage, uh, well, all the folks that can. Obviously, you want to follow your, your home team, one of the, the 12 teams in the GAC, and beyond with some of these new teams, MIAA teams coming in in soccer, of course, in track, some associate members as well. But, uh, Doug, it, it does look to be uh, another fun year ahead for the Great American Conference, and I'm excited. I'm excited as well. You know, one thing I like about these championships is you have a nice blend of, you know, old familiar places we've been before, but now you're mixing in some, some new locations as well. You know, there's there's a lot of, of interesting, cool towns and um, different areas throughout these two states that make up the Great American Conference. So, you know, the chance for the golf to go to Duncan and try out a new course and, you know, a new location, new place they haven't been before. And I've, I've heard good things about the course. Our um, golf coach, Brad Fleetwood, is actually from Duncan. So, <laughs> you know, he grew up in that area and he speaks highly of it. 
Um, and, but then and, you, you know, get, he's, you know, he's led some pretty solid golf teams there at Southwestern as well. Yeah, that he has, <laughs> that he has. So hopefully another one is, or no, you know, two more good teams coming through this year. And which I'd expect nothing less out of coach Fleetwood. Um, but it's nice to be able to showcase some of these other, you know, these other venues, you know, within our, the footwork of the great American conference. Well, um, you, go ahead. I was just going to say, in addition to some of the places like the Enids, the Bentonvilles, the Bartlesvilles, and Hot Springs, you know, that have kind of become the, you know, some of the steady grounds that we tend to go to, you know, on an annual basis. Yeah, we'll get to we'll get to see a little bit more from Arkadelphia and in cross country this year. Who knows? Uh, may you know may even go outside the bounds of Oklahoma and Arkansas in men's soccer. We'll see how that plays out as they're part of the league now. And you mentioned Duncan as well and. I'll tell you what, it, it is a, an exciting season ahead. So that's a look at the championship sites and uh, the times for the GAC Tournament Championships for 2019-2020. We have a lot more ahead and a few more GAC weeklies to come before the actual seasons get underway. First part of September, football we mentioned right around the corner, volleyball as well, and cross country. And, Doug, you are a busy man in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Are you all the way ready yet? You're not ready yet, are you? All the way, no, not anywhere <laughs> close. But I'm every day I'm getting a little closer, and really that's about all we can do this time of year. Well, we appreciate you listening today, and I also appreciate my good friend Doug Self, again, Sports Information Director at Southwestern, for being on with me today on our live stream. And, Doug, I, man, I, I need you back on another live stream or two over the course of the next few months. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pencil you in if that's all right. I'm looking forward to it, and you know you'll see me, you know, the – that opening Thursday night of football season, I'll see you in Durant. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's going to be a lot of fun there, football right around the corner. We're going to shut it down here, this live stream here, the GAC Weekly. Thank you for watching. The GAC Weekly is brought to you by the Great American Conference. To see and hear this and more about the GAC and other high school and college sports, please visit oklahomasports.net and arkansasports.net and subscribe to this channel. It's the new home of the GAC Weekly. It's the midwestsports.net YouTube channel, so we would appreciate it if you would subscribe subscribe and uh, and click on that uh, bell too so you know when we're live streaming so you can watch as well in the meantime thanks again for watching god bless you have a great day